Okay, well, I'm gonna do my best to explain high flow on a SVL 65 or 75. The 95 and 97s are not quite the same as the 65 and 75 is. This is a SVL 75. I know I don't have the stickers on it. Kubota can make a sticker that says Kubota that doesn't get blown off by a power washer, but they cannot make the SVL sticker back there. Um, power washer safe, I guess. Um, we are looking at a, a 2021 SVL 75-2 with high flow. It's got the double manifold. Now I call this a manifold because if you see this, this is all open inside for, for all intents and purposes. This is a manifold. This is not your standard flow circuit and your high flow circuit. You need to think about it as this is your male side. This is your female side. Look at this. You see one pipe? One pipe for each side. You don't have two pipes going in. It's a manifold. So if you hook to this, or if you hook to this, depending on what fitting you have, it's going to react the same. The fluid will flow out of here the same way it'll flow out of here. This is your case drain. Um, that's your that's your little electrical connector if you use anything, you know, like a door or something on a mulcher. Okay, so if if you would open your owner's manual and take a look, and hey, I'm not I'm not saying that because I'm saying hey, you know, you need to read your manual. I didn't know this. I found out when I had my 65, it was a high flow machine. I was running a Osma SSQ160 on it. I've got an old video about it. Uh, that's back when I kept having GoPro eating footages and it's not a very good video. Um, and I never did, I never did get to the point where I could make other videos with it. But um, I found out because I had to replace a line, I had a line blow up. Replaced the line, had both the fittings off for some reason. I don't remember what. Um, I put maybe I put two new lines on it. Put the fittings on, plugged it up, put it in high flow, ran it, and it was you could tell it. You know, if you if you run a mulcher, you know what I'm talking about. You could tell I wasn't at RPM. It's like what's going on? This ain't right. And anyways, I messed with it, messed with it, and I'm like, uh, didn't even read the manual. I talked to a buddy of mine that works at Kubota, and he said, hey, you only have flow on one side. Let me show you. So if you open your manual and read, um, it tells you how to turn your hydraulics on. I'm gonna go over all that in there with you. But if you go in, it says aux port, A, blah, 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 pushes out male side. Um, B, left-hand side, pushes out female port. Um, and it shows you A and B. And basically standard flow is going to be if you run something in standard flow, it is meant to run off this button or this side of the toggle, all right? And it is going to run the female side. So in standard flow, it's going to run this direction, out, in. Then when you're running high flow, you'll use this switch over here or this side toggle. Then what it's going to do is out this side, in the female going to come out the male in the female this is just your case drain all that is is a return it's a an additional return to to uh, help alleviate a lot of that fluid coming out of the high flow now let's uh let's go inside i'm on a uh, life support so i had to mess with the mess with the thing but start your machine up I guess I don't need to idle it or anything. Okay, so you have to push or operate. So our lights are on because we just put the things down. Our operate switch is, you know, depressed so our lights are off. So then, let me see. Might be able to get both of these. All right, so you can watch the screen. You can watch me push this. When you push this, this light lights up. That's your auxiliary. If you want to turn high flow on, you hold this. I think you have to do it at the same time. So if you hit that, you turn it off. Now watch. You turn this on, and then I'm pushing the bottom side of that switch from a high flow. See how it beeped at me, and now you're blinking? 
that's how you turn high flow on. If you're if you're wanting to run high flow, that light has to be blinking. Let's show you again. So I can turn high flow off. Watch the screen. I hit the bottom side and it gives you that little meh, meh, meh. That turn high flow off, my auxiliary's still on. Or I can turn my auxiliary hydraulics off. Now watch closely. Press that, and then you press the bottom side of that, and you hold it until your lights start blinking, and then you let off. Now you're in high flow. And like I said, if you want to run a high flow attachment, you have to run this side constant on or toggle that way, and it's set up to where your right button runs the right side of that manifold, your left button or your left side of the toggle runs the left side of the manifold. So let's turn our hydraulics off totally so it won't run anything. So if I'm running a high flow attachment, I'm going to put it on that side, toggle that way, and then that line goes to the in on your attachment and then you'll run the out to the female. Now vice versa, standard flow, you can run it this side run like that and you're gonna have your feed line come off your female side and go back in your in your male anyways they 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 say in the manual you want to run standard flow that way and high flow that way and like I said out there I almost don't want to get out of the machine it's hot today and the air conditioner was on that felt really good and again your high flow is this side going out and then your return is here standard flow is this side going out and then it goes back in and don't think the don't think of it as high or standard flow and high flow think of it you know as female and male because all this is is a manifold if you had if this had separate circuits again you would have four pipes here you don't have four pipes um and that's probably why they redirect the flow for standard and high flow um i mean not because of the manifold and the pipes that's probably just how they have it plumbed in the machine but anyways hopefully that helps you guys with high flow and standard flow um one other thing if people are gonna i know people might comment about this but when you are detaching your couplers these are pressure releasing couplers see the bottom side isn't but the top side is see how you can push that in the way i disconnect my and you know this is solid um, the way I disconnect, shut the machine off. I know for a fact that if you pull this fitting out, go ahead and pull this fitting out, start your machine. You'll have fluid come out of here. Not crazy, but you're going to have parasitic pressure on the back side of this fitting. Um, that being said, don't push this in and disconnect your coupler with the machine running. You're still, you still have parasitic pressure on there. So when you disconnect, it still may leave pressure in the in the attachment. Now, if you don't know this, when your attachment sits out in the sun and it gets really hot, those lines build a little bit of pressure in it. So if you go to plug up, it still may be a little hard to plug in. That's not because you disconnected wrong. That's because it's sitting out in the sun and it got hot. But the way I disconnect is I will go up and I'll push that... I'll, I'll push the whole assembly in and as it's pushed in I'll release that coupler and pull it with these pushed off or you know pushed in same thing with this one I'll push that in and then you can actuate that as it's pushed in and then you release the coupler since I've been doing that on machines with the pressure releasing couplers I have yet to have a problem to where I have to go break a line loose and plug it in unless it's the beginning of the year where we just came out of winter haven't hooked up to it for a while it probably built a lot of pressure because it got real cold and then it started getting really warm outside and by the time we brush hog obviously it's you know really warm outside um stuff's been growing for like you know 30 45 days that's the only time that i have a problem when i'm going to hook up and something's really really tight um anyways that's just a little tip since we're sitting here messing with the hydraulics now if you need to know how to run your electrical uh, your electrical, I think, if I remember right, it was on that one. You flip it and it beeps at you. And where did my bag go for my dang manual? Oh my gosh, my OCD is going to go rapid. Well, and now I can't show you because I don't know. I had that bag bookmarking it. Anyways, it tells you in there uh, what A, uh, what do they have? A, B, and C maybe. It tells you... Uh, what two or three wires in here does what and it'll actually tell you um 
you know, it'll give you a code. And my eyes aren't good enough, but you can see little tiny numbers on there. It'll tell you what number what is. Um, and they're all kind of generic. Where's my, where's, there's my notch. I don't use that a whole lot. I don't have mulchers or anything with doors on them where I have to open and close them. But anyways, uh, hopefully that helps you guys with high flow. Like I said, the 65 and the 75 is the, the exact same way. My 65 was just like this. Um, the 95 and 97, I ran a 95 or maybe it was a 90. They had, it was a little different setup. You could toggle through like A, B, C, D, and E or something like that, if I remember right. And uh, it was different pressures that were set for each uh, letter in there. If I remember right, I don't know. This is mainly for 65 and 75s, but a 95, it's selectable. You can select different ranges of the flow on the machine. So anyways, hope it helps. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Check out my, my 400 hour review of the 75 here. Um, it'll be up really about the same time as this video. So if you want to see what I think about the machine after 400 hours, check out the video. Uh, as always, please like and subscribe. I haven't told you guys that in a little while. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.